8. SS Sultana Built in Ohio during the early 1860s, as the Civil War ravaged in the U.S., the commercial side-wheel steamboat, SS Sultana, was originally intended for use in the cotton trade along the Lower Mississippi. During its first two years of service, it routinely traveled between St. Louis and New Orleans, often carrying Union troops in addition to cargo. The Sultana was small, measuring just 260 feet 79 meters long, and 42 feet 12.8 meters across at its widest point. It was legally allowed to carry 376 passengers, but more than 2,130 passengers crammed on board one day in 1865, including Union soldiers who had recently been released from Confederate prisons. That same day, something went wrong with one of the Sultana's boilers. Repairing it properly would take a few days, but the captain and chief engineer convinced the mechanic to do a patch job. The dangerously overloaded ferry struggled over the next few days as it fought to sail upriver during heavy spring flooding. While traveling a little north of the Memphis during the early morning hours, the Sultana's faulty boiler exploded. Between 400 and 500 passengers died instantly. Two more explosions ensued, destroying the pilot house, collapsing part of the deck, and ripping a gaping hole in the steamer. Passengers clung to each other for dear life and screamed as loud as they could to get the attention of rescuers as they ended up in the frigid waters. The exact death toll is unknown, but it's estimated that 1,169 lives were lost. Around 760 passengers survived the initial sinking, although 31 of them died in the months following the ordeal. The sinking of the Sultana was the deadliest maritime disaster in U.S. history. Nobody was ever formally held responsible for the incident. Union officer Captain Frederick Speed was initially charged and found guilty of overcrowding the vessel, but his conviction was overturned. Captain Reuben Hatch, who had bribed the Sultana's captain to take on multiple times more passengers than the ship could safely handle, quit the military in a hurry to avoid a court-martial. The only other person at fault, Captain Mason, perished in the disaster. 7. USS Cyclops Built in the years leading up to World War I, the USS Cyclops was designed as a bulk coal carrier called a collier. At nearly 550 feet 168 meters long, it was the U.S. Navy's largest and fastest fuel ship at the time. One of its main duties during the war was to transport medical staff and supplies to a hospital in France. After the conflict, its 50 caliber guns were removed, and it began shuttling cargo back and forth from Brazil. The Cyclops left Rio de Janeiro on February 15, 1918, with a load of manganese ore. It was originally heading for Baltimore, but the captain requested a detour to Barbados, citing engine problems that he suspected were caused by carrying too much cargo. After leaving Barbados for the U.S., the Cyclops was never seen again. All 309 crew members disappeared along with it, without ever sending a distress signal. A massive search effort failed to find the vanished ship and sailors, and the vessel's fate and location remain a mystery to this day. No evidence of what may have happened to it has ever turned up. The disappearance of the crew is considered the greatest non-combat loss of lives in U.S. Navy history. There are many theories about what might have caused the Cyclops to vanish seemingly into thin air, including suspicions revolving around aliens, the Bermuda Triangle, German spies, sea monsters, and possible human culprits. Many have also speculated that the captain, George Worley, was an alcoholic who had no business being in charge of a ship. The crew may have encountered mechanical failures, or they may have been unfamiliar with how to handle the ship properly with a heavy load of manganese ore, which the Cyclops didn't normally carry. Sadly, there's a high likelihood that the lingering questions surrounding the bizarre tragedy will never be answered. 6. RMS Queen Elizabeth after construction was completed during the late 1930s, the 1,031-foot-long RMS Queen Elizabeth held the record for the largest passenger steamship ever built. Named after the wife of King George VI, the luxury liner was initially docked in New York to protect it from German bombs during World War II, but it was eventually called to service as a troop transport ship. The hull was painted gray, and the ship was outfitted with multiple anti-aircraft guns. 
throughout the conflict, the Queen Elizabeth ferried nearly one million Allied soldiers to Asia, Africa, and Europe. After the war ended, the vessel was converted back to a luxury cruise ship for the Cunard Company. It completed its last voyage for Cunard in 1968 and was subsequently sold to a businessman from Hong Kong named C.Y. Tung. He renamed the ship the CY's University and sent it for refitting with plans to turn it into a floating college. In early 1969, someone deliberately set fire to the vessel while it was still undergoing repairs. The CY's University was destroyed in the blaze and was dismantled for scrap. To this day, the arsonist's identity remains a mystery. Many were quick to suspect Jung, the ship's owner, because he had insured it for more than he paid for it. Others suspected that the fire resulted from political differences between Jung, who was a Chinese nationalist, and members from the country's largely nationalist shipbuilding unions. The unfortunate truth is that we'll most likely never know. Do you have any theories on who set fire to the CY's university? Let us know in the comments below, and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. 5. RMS Lusitania The 787-foot-long RMS Lusitania embarked on its maiden voyage from Queenstown, Ireland to Sandy Hook, New Jersey in 1907. At the time, it was the world's largest luxury ocean liner. During its heyday, wealthy passengers, average families, and travelers of limited means widely favored the Lusitania over other ships. First-class amenities were top-notch and spanned two entire decks, offering a lavish dining room, a smoking room, a reading and writing room, a lounge, a music area, and more. The ship's second-class accommodations were like a slightly less lavish version of first-class. There weren't as many spaces and activities to choose from, and they weren't adorned with gilded wallpaper and other over-the-top decor, but the offerings were very comfortable. But the Lusitania made the most money from its third-class passengers, who found the amenities to be much nicer and more spacious than the conditions on other vessels. At the onset of World War I, many passenger ships canceled service for safety reasons. The Lusitania, on the other hand, received a drab gray paint job to make it less conspicuous and powered on. It continued to offer passengers service amid the increasing threat of German U-boats. While nearing the end of its 202nd transatlantic crossing on May 7, 1915, the Lusitania was struck by a torpedo off the Irish coast. The ship quickly began to founder and list, and it sank completely within 18 minutes of being hit, killing nearly 1,200 of the 1,962 passengers and crew members aboard. Civilians in the U.S. and numerous other countries were outraged by the Germans' decision to sink a passenger ship, which marked a step towards America's eventual involvement in the war. The Germans defended the move and claimed no responsibility for the lives lost. 4. Zenobia the Swedish-built ferry Zenobia began its maiden voyage from Sweden to Syria on May 4, 1980, with 104 cargo-filled tractor trailers. While traveling from the Strait of Gibraltar to Athens, the captain encountered steering issues. The 571-foot-long, 174-meter ship soon began to list. Crew members discovered excess water in the ballast tanks and pumped it out. Assuming that the problem had been fixed, the vessel proceeded towards Cyprus. The Zenobia started listing again, and engineers determined that a software malfunction was to blame. Worried that the ship was a danger to other vessels, authorities ordered the captain to leave the harbor. The list worsened after the crew anchored offshore, giving them no choice but to abandon the ship. Witnesses would later claim that the crew calmly drank beer on the shore and watched the Zenobia sink as it took $200 million worth of cargo with it to the seafloor. Some people thought that their unfazed behavior was strange, and they became suspicious when there was no investigation into the sinking. To make things even more bizarre, no insurance claim was ever filed, and nobody ever tried to salvage the cargo. Even the police became suspicious that the Zenobia was perhaps sabotaged and launched an investigation into the incident. Numerous theories about the shady sinking have been floated, including that British and Israeli intelligence destroyed the ship out of a fear that it was carrying guns for the Palestinian Liberation Organization. The truth behind what really happened may never be known, 
but people got at least one cool thing out of the sinking, one of the world's most popular diving sites. Sitting in Larnaca Harbor in crystal clear water, at depths ranging from 50 to 140 feet, it can be seen from above the water and is famous for the array of dump trucks and other vehicles that are scattered around it. 3. USS Juno the Sullivan brothers, George, Francis, Joseph, Madison, and Albert, insisted on serving on the same ship together during World War II, even though U.S. Navy policy forbade them from doing so. They refused to join the fight unless their request was honored, and the military relented and allowed it. The young men served on the 541-foot-long USS Juno, a light cruiser that participated in the Battle of the Santa Cruz Islands in October 1942. A few weeks later, the ship fought in the Battle of Guadalcanal off the Solomon Islands and was struck by a Japanese torpedo. It broke in half and sank entirely in just 12 20 seconds or less. Crews in nearby ships presumed that there was no way anyone survived and left the area. They were unfortunately very wrong. At least 100 people survived the attack. But by the time rescue arrived eight days later, all but 10 had died from shark attacks, dehydration, and exposure. Altogether, 687 sailors lost their lives. In 2018, a crew led by billionaire Paul Allen discovered the Juno wreck resting in several large pieces at the bottom of the South Pacific. It sits nearly three miles beneath the surface at a depth of 13,800 feet. Two. USS Plainview The American Navy built its first hydrofoil ship, the USS Plainview, during the 1960s. Measuring nearly 221 feet and 41 feet across at its widest point, it was the world's largest hydrofoil during its time. The Plainview was a prototype constructed for the express purpose of researching the usefulness and capabilities of hydrofoil vessels. Built by Lockheed, it was made from aluminum and powered by twin turbofan jet engines. Its design enabled it to glide 10 feet above the water's surface at speeds of up to 58 miles per hour. Unlike the Soviet Union, which really took the hydrofoil concept and ran with it, the U.S. military's experimental phase with the boat didn't last very long. The Plainview was taken out of service in 1978 due to the high costs of developing and maintaining it. Commercial fisherman Lowell Stambaugh bought the boat with plans of turning it into a fishing vessel but he gave up on the idea 10 years later. The scrapping process was started at some point, but was never finished, and the Plainview has been left to deteriorate in Washington's Hungry Harbor. Environmental authorities have grown increasingly concerned in recent years about the pollution hazards it poses as the hull corrodes, which means it's likely just a matter of time before it starts to leak contaminants. The need to remove the Plainview from the water is urgent, but doing so is incredibly expensive. For now, it continues to languish with an uncertain future, as an object that once drew curious onlookers, but has been reduced to little more than a rotting eyesore. 1. RMS Carpathia the RMS Carpathia is famously known as the ship that answered the Titanic's distress call on the ill-fated night of April 14, 1912. Harold Cottam was working as the Carpathia's wireless operator when the Titanic's first distress calls went out. He was out on the bridge at the time, but he got the message later on. After not being taken seriously by several crew members, Cottam woke the Carpathia's captain up and he ordered the crew to navigate full steam ahead to the Titanic's coordinates. The Carpathia arrived at the site two hours later. For more than four hours, the ship navigated the debris-strewn waters, pulling more than 700 survivors aboard. Both the passengers and crew aboard the Carpathia sprang into action to help any way they could, from plucking people from the water and lifeboats to comforting traumatized survivors. The 558-foot-long ship went on to serve in World War I as a troop transport vessel. It was torpedoed three times by a U-boat in 1918 and sank off the Irish coast. Five out of the 166 crew and 57 passengers aboard lost their lives. The Carpathia wreck was located in 2000. At a depth of 500 feet, it's owned by Premier Exhibitions Incorporated, which owns more than 5,500 artifacts from the Titanic. 
the company plans to recover artifacts from the Carpathia for display in traveling exhibitions. Thanks for watching. Which one of these ships ends was the worst in your opinion? Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.